So in the last video, I gave you guys an inside look into what is in my camera bag and full of Sony gear for the most part using the Sony A1, the Sony 24 to 70 and the 70 to 200 millimeter lenses are really the cornerstone pieces of what I use to actually take the pictures, especially when it comes to sports photography. Now, in this video, I wanted to do a recap of what it looked like for me to shoot that weekend, last weekend's football game for my nephews, uh, their homecoming football game, which is the most anticipated game of the season because typically you put the worst opponent on the schedule so you know that you have the victory. Unfortunately, that weekend was completely rained out. Now, the game still took place, but setting up the equipment to show you guys the behind the scenes wasn't something I was willing to risk with my other equipment to record it because it was a rain out. But I was able to get some pictures and the pictures that I got were mainly of the homecoming families coming out to walk with their kids, walk with their players before and after the game. So I have two nephews that play, one plays on the 8U team and the other plays on the 11U team. Now the 8U team had to play their entire game in the rain. Unfortunately, they did not come out with the win because because they did have to play a stronger opponent. So after their game, I was able to get shots of the, the families and the players. And then for the 11U game, we were able to get their shots before the game. And then they were able to go out and dominate and get the victory. So I wanted to kind of lay that foundation. So as you guys are seeing the pictures, you kind of know what I had to deal with for that day. So when it came time to take pictures, initially the game plan was to take pictures of the game only. There was another photographer that was going to take pictures of the families walking out with the kids, but with all the heavy downpour and the confusion and just trying to figure out where the best place to take pictures would be, I ended up taking the family pictures as well. Now last year I took the family pictures and it was a spur of the moment thing and this year was kind of the same thing as well because I wasn't quite prepared to take them. So when I was called over to where the 11U team would be taking their pictures, I quickly opened up my bag and pulled out this lens, which is the 70 to 200. So last year I used the Sony 70 to 200 F4 lens to take the same types of pictures. But last year we had a really nice day, nice, bright and sunny. And so when some people talk about using lenses that have that lower f-stop, having the f4 lens on a bright sunny day is more than sufficient enough to take some really sharp pictures. But this is the brand new Sony 70 to 200 f2.8 G Master version 2. And so uh, it was nice to have this one because even though we were finally able to take pictures outside, there was still a significant overcast in the sky. And so having that 2.8 aperture and really being able to dial down on that and then bring it up a little bit more on my ISO side, I was able to still get some really good pictures. Now the 70 to 200 lens was a really good lens for this type of portrait style picture, if you will, uh, because I was able to just leave it right on my camera body and then immediately go and shoot the game as well. So having this lens was definitely a game changer when it comes to having having those sharp pictures and thank goodness my camera was already set and ready to go to take the pictures. So I'm glad the camera body was already charged up. We did that in the last video, made sure everything was charged up. SD card was already in the camera. So we were ready to go as soon as we took it out the bag, just had to pop on the lens and take those pictures. Now, as the families came towards me for their pictures and in their line sequence, um, I was able to direct them, have them stop at a certain yard marker, get that picture, snap it off real quick. And what I like to do is just take multiple pictures. So even though this is a very high-end camera, sometimes if it's not focused correctly or someone's moving still, it doesn't quite know where to pick that focus. So taking a couple extra shots definitely did save me when 
when I went back to go through the photos because there were some pictures that were blurry, but thank goodness I had those extra pictures that I was able to pick out the best one that I could send back over to the team so all the families could have pictures with their players. So after we shot the photos for the 8U and the 11U parents and players, then the 11U football game actually took place. Now they still had rain during the initial start of their game. So continued to use the 70 to 200 because it was already on the camera body and began to get some action shots of that. And what I did this time around uh, is really try some different unique perspectives that I haven't shot in the past. Now, typically when I shoot their games, I'll stand on the sidelines anywhere between the 20 yard line and the end zone. And that's on the our team side. So one of the things I do have the privilege is knowing some of the play calling. And so when I hear certain words and certain sequences, phrases and audibles, I kind of get a little bit of an insight of where I think the best place will be to get that next potential picture. So if I know it's a run play design that's coming towards me, I can make sure that I am ready to go for that particular picture. If it's a pass play, I can kind of get an idea of lining up where the receivers are going to go and just having them more in my focus to make sure I catch that pass play because I have a little bit of knowledge of not only the game, but actually our team's play calling as well. Now, unfortunately, one of the different things I wanted to try was a deep end zone shot. And so I went to uh, the back of the end zone and was just trying to get that wide field of view and trying to just get the matchups between the wide receivers and the defensive backs and getting more of their faces and their off the line uh, interactions, if you will. So of course, when I wanted to go try this new location in the back of the end zone to get this wide shot, is when my nephew caught a screen pass and took it to the house and he just outran the team for the touchdown. Now in a perfect world, I would have been on the other end zone and I would have been able to catch that and have him coming right towards me. So unfortunately missed that shot, but because they play year round essentially, I'm always able to get a picture of him and send it over to him so he can have it put it on his phone, maybe even print it out and put it on his wall for his own poster. Now, one of the items that I showed you that I keep in my bag in the last video was a 2X Sony teleconverter. And I actually used it quicker than I anticipated for this game. Now, even though there was an overcast and throwing that teleconverter will only allow me to shoot at F.6, I still was able to get some really good shots. It seemed like for some reason, all the plays were to the far side of the field. And so in order to get that shot that I wanted and still be between the 20 yard line and the end zones, I needed a little bit more reach. Now, I don't have the funds to go out and buy a 400 2.8 millimeter lens. So having the teleconverter on here to take this from a 70 to 200 to a 140 to 400 is what I go with when I'm looking to shoot those distances that are further away. Pictures still come out super crisp. Now I do crop in a lot, but having the Sony A1 and a 50 megapixel image allows me to crop in and still get a really good picture at the end of the day. Now for this particular game, all I did was shoot in JPEG. Now, sometimes I do shoot RAW and JPEG. It just really depends on what the deliverable will be. And in most cases, it's just me getting better and better and better at taking action photography pictures. If I know that I'm going to edit the photos, then I'll go ahead and take them in RAW and in JPEG just so I have it. But for this particular event, I didn't plan on really getting anything but action shots for my nephew. And so I just shot everything in JPEG. Now, one of the things that I definitely forgot to do during the game, make sure you don't forget, is to crank up that shutter speed. There were some shots that I missed in focus and got the blur effect because I didn't crank up my shutter speed. And when it comes to youth football, I like to be about 1200, 1250 is what I'll use for my shutter. I even find that at a thousand, which is recommended by some people, I still get some blurry shots. And I think it's because our team is fast. They are really fast. So I definitely 
definitely like to crank up my shutter speed a little bit higher than even what some of the professionals recommend just to make sure I can get that shot in prime focus. Now the other lens that I keep in my bag is the 24 to 70 as well. And so I use that lens just occasionally to get some wide shots during halftime and after the game. So when the players were crouched down and listening to the things they needed to correct, then I pulled out the other lens and was able to get some pretty cool wide shots. Now, it's not a lens that I traditionally use. Well, one, because it's a newer lens that I just got, but it is a lens that I want to use more and try to see how I can implement it more into just taking some unique photos. One of the things that I wanna do more of is those intro photography photos. So when players are coming through the tunnel and they're ripping through the banner. I wanna get some of those unique shots in a wide angle with that 24 to 70. So stay tuned for some of these other pictures and other compositions that you can get just from being in different angles and using different lenses. So overall, the weekend was pretty good. Unfortunately, just couldn't document everything behind the scenes because it was such a rainy day. But I do have a camera that I can't wait to show you. It's the Osbot Tail Air, an AI tracking camera that I'm gonna start bringing with me. It's gonna allow me to track myself behind the scenes and record so you guys will be able to see the footage. Without having a camera person to record me, it's kind of difficult to show you everything that goes on at an event and how I like to do certain things, especially when it comes to photography and video live streaming. But hopefully with this brand new camera setup, it'll allow me to capture more footage. That way I can share it with you guys. If this video has been valuable to you or you just enjoyed something a little bit different here on the channel, as we talk more about camera gear, make sure you hit a like. And if you're brand new, hit subscribe. See you in the next video.